Okay, so we are in the process of calculating the expected value of a, a random variable which is distributed binomially. Okay, so firstly, uh, the first thing we need to note is uh, in this sum, we can drop the summation from i is equal to zero for i is equal to zero because when i is equal to zero, um, i is equal to zero here. Uh, therefore, that. Uh, that uh, piece of the ter a piece of the sum uh, contributes absolutely nothing, so we might as well just sum from i is equal to one to n. Okay. The second thing to note is that. Um, we should expand this n choose i, and the reason is that we're going to get the i factorial in the bottom, which will cancel with our uh, i over here. So if we sum i is equal to one to n p to the i q to the n minus i of n factorial then it would be over n minus i factorial, and it would be over i factorial, but we've cancelled one of the i, so it'll go down to i minus 1 factorial. Okay, uh, then what we need to do is, what we quite like to do is uh, get it in the form of, um, we'd quite like to do, uh, we'd quite like to pull out an n here, uh, the reason being that if we pull out an n from this n factorial, what we get is the sum i is is this this paper looks very slanted. Yeah, it is uh, the sum from i is equal to one to n p i q to the n minus i, and then we get n, and then we get n minus one factorial, and we could rewrite n minus i as n minus one minus i minus one uh, factorial over i minus 1 factorial. Okay, oh dear, this is squashed up like that. Uh, I hope you can see that. Let me move it out so that it's more visible. Okay, let's do use the whole paper. Um, so, okay, it's equal to, um, is equal to, um, well, uh, this is n, uh, so the reason that this is doable is all I've done is subtracted one and then I've added one over here. And the reason that's clever to, thing to do is because this can be rewritten as n minus one choose i minus one, which is looking hopeful. So the sum i is equal to one of n, and then we'll pull this n out to the front, n over there. Uh, we've got at the moment p to the i, q to the n minus i, uh, and we've got n minus 1, choose i minus 1. So we'd really like to get this uh, into the form where we can apply the binomial theorem for uh, summing something up uh, to the power of n minus 1, basically. Uh, so um, the way we need to do that is we need to sum, we need to rewrite, we need to use a different variable. We need to sum from j is equal to 0 to n minus 1, and we'll define j to be equal to i minus 1. So if we rewrite this sum, it's the sum from j is equal to 0 to n minus 1, and then we'll replace i with j plus 1. Uh, q will replace with n, uh, well, no, we don't replace q. We replace i here again with i plus 1, and then we get n minus 1, choose j. So, this is looking very hopeful. We can write this as the n times the sum from j is equal to 0. We need to pull out one of these p's for a starter. So let's pull out a p here. So we'll put that p there. Uh, then we get p to the j. We get q to the n minus 1 minus j. That should be there. That should be j rather than i. A j. Uh, and then we've got n minus 1. Choose j uh, up to n minus 1. And this is just a perfect binomial from the binomial theorem. Uh, so this is equal to p plus q to the n minus 1. But of course, p plus q is equal to 1. So that is just equal to 1. So we get that the expected value is therefore n times p. And that's the formula that you will see in textbooks. The expected value of the binomial distribution of a random variable distributed binomially is n p. OK, so let's do a final one. Let's do the geometric distribution that we saw in the uh, previous video. Let's uh, find the expected value of the geometric distribution. So let's say x is distributed geometrically uh, with the parameter p. That means that the probability that x is equal to little x is equal to uh, q to the uh, little x times p. Uh, so the total number of the all the what we need to do is if we want to find the expected value of big x 
then that's equal to the sum over every possible x. Well, for the geometric distribution, that's x is equal to 0 to infinity of q to the x p times the value of x. So this is the probability that x is equal to x, and uh, this, is, this is the value, little x. So this is a weighted average again. Okay. Um, so, if we write out what this uh, great big sum is, firstly we will pull that p out as always. Uh, we're not interested in that at the moment, so uh, that plays no part in the sum. So what we've got is x q of x. So, uh, let me show you how we would uh, do a sum like that. Okay, so it helps uh, to write out what this really is. So the first term is 0 to the times q to the 0, which is 0. Uh, so we might as well just sum from x is equal to 1 to infinity. So the first term is 1 q to the 1, so q. Uh, then this next term is 2 q squared, plus 2 q squared, plus onwards we will get 3 q to the 3, plus 4 q to the 4, plus, and when you continue on, uh, indefinitely. Okay, so we could rewrite this as q plus q squared plus q cubed plus q to the 4 all the way on, uh, and we could have that it's plus, uh, well, we'll need 0 q, so we get 0 there, plus 1 q squared plus 2 q cubed plus 3 q to the 4 and that goes on and on and on and then what we can do is we could pull out a q from here and we get uh, if we rewrite this bit here just this bit we're looking at this bit now we could write this as q 1 q plus 2 q squared plus 3 q cubed etc so basically if we call this thing here if we call this thing here s and we call so this whole sum here is s uh, we get that s is equal to q plus q squared plus q cubed plus q to the power of 4 plus dot 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 and then what we've got here is s back again so this is s again plus q lots of s so therefore subtract this from this side so we get s 1 minus q is equal to q plus q squared plus q cubed uh, plus q to the 4 uh, and so on and uh, this looks far more amenable to being solved uh, because this is just the geometric series if we factor out q so if we take 1q out of here then we'll have 1 plus q squared plus q cubed etc onwards uh, or we missed out a q so q q squared plus q cubed etc uh, and we know that the sum of that is equal to 1 over uh, 1 minus q Okay, and uh, so at the moment what we've got is that s times 1 minus q is q t divided by 1 minus q, therefore s is equal to q over 1 minus q squared. And we know that uh, 1 minus q we know is equal to p, so we get that this is q over p squared. And we know that that is not the expected value of x yet, because the expected value of x was equal to this thing up here, I, it was this sum times p. So we get the expected value of x is pq over p squared, which is equal to q over p. Um, and that is the expected value for a random variable which is distributed geometrically.